but he can offer them friendlier service than they've ever seen. And so he started the company. He named it after the battleship that he'd flown from in the Pacific, which was the USS Enterprise. And uh, he died about a year, year and a half ago. But when he died, his rent-a-car company, starting with those 17 cars, was worth more than Hertz and Avis and all the rest of the rental cars put together. The man's name was Jack Taylor, and his son, Andy Taylor, is a good friend of mine, uh, runs the business now. A grandchild is in the business. They'll probably be a fourth generation along the line. So this, this man in the United States, he didn't invent artificial intelligence. You know, he didn't do anything that, uh, just like Mrs. B, selling furniture. I mean, that any one of us could have entered those businesses. But he lived by the, by the creed, basically, of delighting his customers and working with people and establishing the relationship with them so that they, in turn, would want to delight the customers. He, he couldn't go out there and take care of every rental car uh, possibility, but he, he learned how to project himself uh, and his attitude toward his fellow man and his desire you know, to make a friend out of every customer. He managed to take very ordinary cars and turn them into this extraordinary business from virtually nothing. At, uh, and it illustrates several points. Uh, one is you don't necessarily get it right the first, exactly right the first time. I mean, the car leasing business, you know, basically you were competing on the cost of money to finance cars. And it's very hard to delight a customer when you just give them the car and tell them to send you a monthly check for five years and you'll be back at that time. So his talents were being wasted basically in that business. But at the age of 40, with all of that experience behind him, he found the golden key. He took a very ordinary business and turned it into an absolutely extraordinary operation, just like Mrs. B or Rose Bumpkin did with furniture. And he didn't worry about whether the Federal Reserve was going to tighten or ease. He didn't worry about whether the stock market was up or down yesterday. He didn't worry about the things he couldn't change, but he did worry, he did focus on the one thing he could change, and that was the customer's experience. And I have seen